had the Brewers all out on the field, I tell you, we got a very lucky break this afternoon. Al Brown, myself, and Don Carney took a trip out to County Stadium to check out this football press box that they have out here. Because the uh, regular station where we broadcast from has not been completed right out of the open, and we would have frozen. There's no way we'd have been able to talk without our teeth chattering. I said it gives you an altogether different perspective of the game. It might be a little more interesting from up there. We see so much from directly in back of home plate. But as we mentioned, a big, big ball game for the Yankees. No lucky could be spoilers, and they'll be out there trying to win. There'll be no easy task for the Yankees. Especially with Baltimore, as we told you. They defeated the uh, Detroit Tigers 7-6. Baltimore got seven runs on nine hits and one error. Kobo 
Bowl set. Fastball line to right field, but Lescano right there, one handed again, fires back to first, but over the head of George Scott and Roy White is back safely. Two shots hit to right center and right field, both one handed.
triple, 15 homers, 64 runs batted in, and 19 stolen bases. There's a swing and a foul over alongside the Yankee dugout, strike one. Honey is an excellent leadoff man. Reminds me a lot of Hank Bauer. He's the kind that can put your head one nothing with a home run. If he gets on, he can steal a base. The doctor's next pitch, a curve, hits the outside corner, it's strike two. It's nice and warm in this football press box. The only thing you miss is the uh, noise of the crowd. Well, there's not much of a crowd here in this freezing weather. There's a swing and a miss at a side on curveball, strike three. Doc came by the way of third base that time. Really fooled money. And on three pitches, he strikes money out. And that brings up six goal Escano. Escano batting 255. He's been about 47 times. 12 hits, two doubles, two homers, and eight runs batted in. A right hand batter. Curve is low and outside, ball one. Lamedic is 151st strikeout of the year. He is two behind uh, Pat Dotson now, who leads the Yankees with 153. There's a strike on the outside corner. It's one and one. for next year, along with Harvey Keene, Joe Nasek, and Bill, is it Bill Walton? No, foul back in the crowd, not a play. It's Jim Walton. Walton coaches at first, Joe Nasek at third, and Harvey Keene is the batting coach. Matter of fact, Al Whitmar, who was the pitching coach, will be in charge of all the minor league teams. In the paper, who's a new pitching coach, and I forgot. There's a drive, a base hit to right field. Played on one hop by Lou Pinella out there, and Lescano, after falling behind, lines a single to right. First hit off the dock, and it brings up George Scott. Scott batting 279. Boy, he's gone down. Last time we played him, he was right near 300. But he has 36 doubles, two triples, 17 homers, and 81 runs batted in. Oh, Chambliss holding the bag against Lefkano. Got a short lead as Medic sets. Mr. Scott is foul back upstairs and out of play, strike one. Lescano has tried to steal once and was caught stealing. So this is the first time we've had a chance to really get a look at this youngster. Get to know him for next year and the years to come. Yankee infield in double play depth. And they play Scott straight away in the outfield. He's got a lot of power, but he's not a pull hitter. Served by Medich, lower away. One ball, one strike. throw to first. Runners back. And Alomar has shortened up just a couple of steps at second base. Here's the pitch. And it hits the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. On deck, Darrell Porter, the catcher. Milwaukee has a lot of outstanding young ball players. Comes to the belt. Checks the runner. The kick and the pitch is popped up to right field. Should be easy for Penella. Lou moving to his left. Under it now. And pounds the glove and makes the catch his two away. And with two outs, Darrell Porter will be the batter. Porter is batting 242. 15 doubles, 4 triples, 12 homers, and 56 runs batted in. Really is quiet in here. All you can hear is Bill Kane popping his gum. <laughs> Sounds good, though, Bill. With a full moon up there, I mean a bright full moon. And it's got to be bright. It's so cold, the clouds wouldn't dare appear in that sky. Well, I would see a little snow, though, but it's going to get down below 30 in a very short time. I put some water out in a paper cup out there, and I'm going to go keep checking and see if it freezes before the night's over. 
Pitch to Porter. Foul in the upper deck and out of play. Normally a full moon is beautiful. The moon looks like it's cursing its lips and blowing all that cold air right down on it, doesn't it? Tell me this time of year the weather is beautiful, or should be beautiful. I'm here in Milwaukee, I'm talking about. All right, but it's kind of leading away. And Matt is checking, and he's going. The ball is low. Munson's throw. Oh, for some reason, Mason came in front of the bag. I don't know why, unless he thought the throw was going to be low, and Munson made a beautiful throw. Let a high, and Mason came in front of the bag. No chance of even trying to tag Lascano. Couldn't figure unless Thurman with his uh, trouble with his arm has been throwing them low all year that uh, Mason went in front expecting it to be low. Pitch to Porter, ground ball right at Sandy Alomar. He's up with it. Flips the Chamblers for the outdoor. They get out of the jam. Oh, Milwaukee got a break but couldn't take advantage of it. No runs, a hit, no errors, a man left. The end of one full inning. It's the Yankees, nothing in the Brewers. We can update some scores now in the National League. Cincinnati and Atlanta, after three and a half, are still right of four to nothing, but Norman has come in to pitch now for Cincinnati. Pittsburgh scored three runs in the bottom half of the fourth inning and now leads Chicago by the score of three to one after four and a half innings of play. Smith hit his 23rd home run for St. Louis with none on in the fourth, and that's been the only score thus far, as St. Louis is leading Montreal by the score of one to nothing after three and a half. In case you missed it, Baltimore won earlier in the day by beating Detroit by the score of seven to six. Jackson getting the win, his record six and four. Hiller the loser, 17 and 14. Minnesota shut out Texas six to nothing. That's the final. Goats the winner is record ten and ten. David Clyde got the loss, and his record is nine and nine. The Twins didn't waste too much time. They scored two runs in the first, three in the third, and uh, one more in the fourth, and that was it for the rest of the game. A two-hit shutout for Goats uh, picking up his tenth win of the season. Former Philadelphia 76ers star Billy Cunningham has returned to the NBA club after playing two seasons with the ABA Association Carolina Cougars. Fight manager Dick Sabbath says heavyweight champion Foreman has bounced back real well from the ICOT, which postponed his uh, title bout against Muhammad Ali. And now it's the Daily News home run playoff inning. The second inning. H. Ryan of Queens Village, New York, will have Thurman Munson batting for him. Coble's pitch to Munson is low ball one. Remember, $100 for a single, $200 for a double, $300 for a triple, $1,000 for a home run. No score, we're in the top of the second. Pitch to Thurman is popped up in the shallow left center. Coming on is Coluccio and Briggs, and Briggs calls and makes the catch. There's one away. So, Tom Ryan gets just two tickets to a future Yankee home game. And now Charles G. Kellerman of Lyndhurst, New Jersey, will have Chris Chambliss batting for him. Let's see, Munson was up there batting 260. Chambliss batting 255. I tell you, the month of September has been an excellent month for Chris. Chambliss has hit in 21 of his last 25 games. A left-hand batter. Coble, a left-hand pitcher, delivers. It's in there, strike one call. One out, nobody on. No score in the top of the second inning from County Stadium in Milwaukee. Fastball fouled back into the crowd. Man, they had a duck in a hurry to get out of the way of that one. That was a bullet. Right back into the box seat to the left and behind home plate. You get hit tonight, you're really going to feel it. All right, two quick strikes on Chris Chambliss. Curve bounced to first base. Scott has it. He'll make the play unassisted, and Chambliss is out. Away and two tickets go to Charles D. Kellerman. He gave a lot of money 
out in Cleveland. They want to do it tonight, but the Yankees are going to have to get started. And now John E. Kovacs of Norwalk, Connecticut, will have Greg Nettles batting for him. Greg had a hot series in Cleveland. He's batting 246 with 22 homers and 75 runs batted in. Pitch to Nettles is low ball one. binoculars we could keep you aware of what the temperature is. There's a big sign way out over the left field fence. There's a drive down the left field line, but it's curving. Foul. One hop against the left field fence. It's a ball and two strikes on Greg Nettles. Two out and nobody on. No score here in the top of the second inning. On a very, very cold night in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Flurries this afternoon. Fastball just outside. Two balls, two strikes. As Kobel had beaten the Yankees three straight times before the Yankees finally got to him. The 2 2 pitch is fouled back upstairs and out of play. Well, I heard Merle Harmon's voice back there on a the radio does the play-by-play of the Milwaukee Brewer games here. Curve swing and a miss strike three. Nettles is struck out on a high curveball. Go two tickets. Go to John Kovacs of Norwalk, Connecticut. And for the Yankees, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. And in the middle of the second inning, it's the Yankees, nothing, the Brewers, nothing. Frank Robinson will be named the playing manager of the Cleveland Indians Thursday, thereby becoming the first black manager in Major League Baseball history. Robinson's salary will remain at his president $173,000 a year level, automatically making him the highest paid manager in the history of baseball. The 40-year-old Robinson, obtained on waivers from the California Angels two and a half weeks ago, will continue serving the Indians as a designated hitter as well as manager next year. Some baseball people are completely opposed to playing managers in the majors on the theory that any manager has more than enough to do without having to worry about playing. But the Indians don't feel that way at all. They remember the last man ever to lead them to a world championship was Lou Boudreaux back in 1948, and he was a playing manager. As a matter of fact, Boudreaux played 152 games for the Indians that year, all but one of them at shortstop, and he finished second only to Ted Williams in batting with a 355 average. Robinson already has managed San Truth in the Puerto Rican League five years, and the man who originally signed him for that job, San Truth Club owner President Hiram Service, has no doubts whatsoever that Robinson will do a good job as a major league manager. So Frank Robinson, apparently to become the first black manager in Major League Baseball. Baltimore manager Earl Weaver preceded Robinson as San Teresa's manager. He recommended him as a manager to Suivas. Davey, that's for sure. Left hand 
first batter. No score. We're in the bottom of the second inning. That is just a sign for Mustard. Slow curve hit deep to right center field. Elliott Maddox to his left. Right on the goal line makes the catch. And they're a two-way. batting 220 has six homers and 30 runs batted in. Yankees play in straight away. He's got good power and good speed. Mattis delivers his low. Scooped up by Munson. Ball one. delivery is fouled over towards the Yankee dugout. One on one. Each team with one base hit in the ball game. Night like this, you don't expect much scoring. Tough to swing that bat. Almost all the hitters using two golf clubs. There's a check swing line drive to right field. Pinella digging. Can't get it. Has to play it on one hop. Coluccio trying to do There's a throw to second, and he's safe. Oh, what a throw. I want to tell you something about that play. Russ gets had that play called a little too soon. He might have been safe, but he really called him safe before the play was completed. A beautiful play by Pinella. As Coluccio trying to check his swing, hit a line drive down the line. Pinella raced over, grabbed his turn around, threw it, strike to Nathan. And as Coluccio was sliding head first, Jim put a quick tag on him. But it appeared that Russ Getz had made up his mind before the play was even completed. So Coluccio is at second with two out in the bat, and now Tim Johnson, the shortstop. Johnson batting at 245. No score. Pitch by Maddox is a curve over the outside corner. Strike one call. Johnson, a left hand bat. A young Robin Yount, who has such a great year going, was injured. There's a ground ball. The first champ was up with it. He'll make the play unassisted. And that's all for Johnson and the Brewers in the bottom of the second. No runs are hit. No errors. A man left. At the end of two. Mets announced Tuesday the resignation of general manager Bob Sheffing and his replacement by the club's director of minor league operations, Joe McDonald. Sheffing will remain with the Mets as a troubleshooter and consultant operating out of his Scottsdale, Arizona home. In making the announcement, M. Donald Grant, the chairman of the board, said the 61-year-old Sheffing originally had accepted the general managership with the understanding it would be for three or four years, but the board persuaded him to continue for a fifth season. The 45-year-old McDonald, who joined the Mets upon their inception in 1962 as the club's petition, has been recommended by Sheffing as his successor. Thank you. 
53 on the year. George Scott holds the bag against Alomar. Money is way in at third base. Here's the stretch by Coble. The pitch to Mason is a swing and a fly ball down the left field line. Briggs is there, though. Playing him perfectly. Has it in fair territory. And Alomar has to come back. Having an off here. Batting 
just 200. But he has 12 homers and 54 runs batted. And a right-hand batter, very exciting ball player, takes a curve inside ball one. Doc Medich dueling Kevin Koble. Fastball hit deep to left foot foul. He really got around on that one. Still leading Cincinnati 4-0 at the end of 4. The Cardinals leading Montreal 1-0 at the end of 5 now. Oh, that hit Garcia off the hand. It sounded like it hit his helmet or his bat, but it hit him right off the hand, and Garcia, on a night like this, that's got to really hurt. A fastball in on him, and I tell you, when it hit him off the hand, it sounded like it had hit the bat. And Adele Grant was going over it. golf glove on. He has a golf glove on uh, both hands. Takes it off now. Shows it to Del Crandall. It looks like uh, right now he's going to hang in there. Yes, he's going to stay in the ball game. All right, we told you when this game started, the temperature was 39. We know it's going down, and it's supposed to get in the 20s before this ball game is over is not an exciting night for the ball players to be running around hitting and throwing. All right, Don Money struck out his first time up. Garcia, good base runner, leading away. Stretch by Medic. And the pitch is fouled, and Hudson's coming back. I don't believe he has room. If he does, and makes a one-hand catch, fires to first base, but Garcia gets back with Alomar sneaking in back of him. Good play by Munson as the wind brought that back, and he was planning against the railing when he one-handed the ball. Excellent play by Thurman Munson. Big out. Get the dangerous down money out of there. And now it brings up Sixto Lescano, who uh, single right field and stole a base in the first inning. nothing ball game in the bottom of the third. Campless holding the bag against Garcia. Stretch by Medic. And the pitch is low and outside ball one. Doc walks back now. Takes his glove off. Rubs up the ball. The Dodgers do in Houston nothing. So do Pittsburgh leading the Cubs 3 1 at the end of five. That game is being delayed because of rain. There goes Garcia. The ball is swung at miss. Munson throw one hop to Mason and they got him. Ho oh, oh. Maybe that's the way Thurman ought to throw with that bad arm. He threw a one hopper. That bounced over about 10 feet in back of the mound and skid it on the strike to Mason. And Jim put an easy tag on the speedy Garcia. Away. And the batter still six dollars count with a count of one ball, one strike on him. I tell you, on that artificial turf, that wouldn't be a bad way for catchers to throw. The ball really skips off that. A bouncer to third base. Nettles has it on one hop. Fires to first in time. And that keeps him down the line. So, no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. And now at the end of three full innings, it's the Yankees. Nothing in the Brewers. Nothing. Billy Cunningham, the former Philadelphia 76ers star forward, who is the subject of an extensive legal battle between the Sixers and the Carolina Cougars, joined the Philadelphia team after boarding the 76ers bus to Binghamton, New York. Cunningham will be with the 76ers for the game Tuesday night against the New York Nets, a move which singles his attempt to end the court battle. He joins the team for the first time in two years after playing two seasons with the Cougars of the ABA. Cunningham previously played seven seasons with the 76ers, averaging just over 21 points a game. The court dispute began when a court ruled his ABA contract had precedence 
the agreement with the Cougars, who have since moved to North Carolina and become the St. Louis Spirits, expires Monday. And the 76ers have maintained their old contract with Cunningham, which has not expired, binds him to that team. The ABA contract, however, contains an option clause under which St. Louis could seek to keep Cunningham by court action. So, that's about the latest as far as Billy Cunningham is concerned. Well, they're all ready to go. That is everybody but me. Frank Messer comes in to take over the next three innings on this very, very cold and the first day of snow here in Milwaukee. Frank Messer. Okay, it's good. And Alex Johnson up there takes the first pitch inside for a ball. Yeah, I talked about the snow and everything out here. Scooter going down to 22 tonight. Still folks, there was a full moon to go with it. I did. Is that a harvest moon? It is. You're right. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes. I remember when I was on the farm. We used to harvest the wheat and the corn. This is just about the time we do it. Alex Johnson swings and fouls one back in the seat. Two balls and a strike. The Yankees designated hitter, Alex Johnson. Fastball comes in high from Coble. I'm sure, Bill, you told the folks we're out at right field. I did. Johnson fouls one away on the right side, just past the front of our booth. Balls and two strikes to Alex. He hits this one back up the middle, but right at the second baseman. Garcia has it, throws him out, this one away. And now Lupinella, Yankee cleanup hitter and right fielder tonight, replacing Bobby Mercer, injured, unable to play, due to a jammed finger. but he's not often called out on a strike. Pretty good eye for the strike zone. Right hand hitter. Swings on the first one, fouls it back. That's caught by one of the cameramen down there behind home plate, it looks like. Thurman Munson is on deck. No score this ball game. The Yankees must win it. Pitches high and away, bounces off the middle of the catcher, Darrell Porter. An absolute must. The Orioles have clinched a tie. The Yankees must win this. Hope Baltimore loses tomorrow afternoon, and the Yankees must then win tomorrow. This pitch is looped out in a shallow center field, going back for it, though, as the second baseman, and Garcia drops it. Garcia had it and dropped it out in shallow right center. And Bonello is on. That'll be an error charge to Pedro Garcia, the second baseman. So all the Yankees got a break. Thurman Munson coming up. Left-hander Kevin Cobo. Good move to first base. He picked Alomar off in the third inning. Scott is holding the inside corner on Lou Pinella. Munson flies to left his first trip. The kick and the pitch to him. Foul away over on the first base side. No balls and one strike. lead off first base. Cobo looks over at him and throws over, but Ellis steps back. The shortstop, Tim Johnson at the second baseman. Pedro Garcia set up in double play depth. Money at third, and even with the bag. Cobo comes set, left-hander deals. High! And the catcher, Porter, had to leap up for that one. He almost threw it away for a wild pitch. Porter went high to pull it in. One ball and one strike. One out, 
out, Cavella. Again, a two-step lead at first base. Coble delivers the plate. A fastball is inside. Two balls and a strike now on Thurman Munson. And the pitch. Fastball is fly down toward right center field. Running hard for it is Moscato. He can't get it. The ball is in between for an extra base hit. And Vanella falls down between second and third and has to stop at third. Lou Vanella scrambling, but fell down between second and third. He crawled a couple of steps. Got up. That had to stop at third base. Munson has a two-base hit up the alley in right center. And the Yankees with one out have runners at second and third. Coppers at the mound as the shortstop Johnson came in. George Scott went over to talk to Kevin Coble. And the batter now is Chris Chambliss with runners at second and third and one out. With a chance to put the Yankees on the board. Now the field play back at second base. Safe. They made it a field play at second base. On Penella rounding the bag. But in the opinion of umpire Marty Springstead, who called it, Penella had touched the bag. And now the pitch to Chaplin. Fouled away on the third base side. Goes into the upper deck, bounces back downstairs. for the strike. The infield play is back. So the Brewers will try to keep out of a big inning, give up a run if they have to. There's another foul upstairs in the same place on the third base side. Not many people here tonight. I'd say probably a whole lot of them are Yankee fans over there behind the Yankee third base dugout. Global ready to pitch, 0-2. And he struck him out. Chambliss swings and misses. There are two down. That is the third strikeout for Kevin Coble. Coble will celebrate his 21st birthday tomorrow. Young man from Buffalo, New York. He should be used to this kind of weather. Because it does get cold up there. Greg Nettle steps in. He struck out his first time up. And he takes a low fastball, ball one. Runners at second and third, two down. Infield back, and around to the first base side on Greg Nettles. Next pitch, popped up. Down the first base line. George Scott is after it, straddling the line. Now back in fair ground, he makes the catch for the other side. So this Yankee stretch goes by the board. No runs, one hit. There was an error, two men are left. At the end of three and a half, the score. The Yankees nothing and Milwaukee nothing. Taking a look at the scoreboard, Baltimore defeated Detroit 7-6 earlier in the day. Seven runs, nine hits, and an error for Baltimore. Six runs, 12 hits, and an error for Detroit. Jackson got the win in relief of Jim Palmer. Jackson is now 6-4. Hiller, the loss. Coleman walked, and then Hiller, the third pitcher of the game for Detroit. Hiller drops to 17-14. and 14. Three hands. It is 17th and 18th home runs for Detroit. A solo shot in the fourth and a solo blast in the sixth. Carson hit his fourth for Baltimore with one on in the fifth. And Northrop hit his 12th home run of the season with one on in the sixth for the Orioles as he comes through with a two-run blast against his former teammates. Minnesota shut out Texas six to nothing on a two-hitter by Gold. His record is now ten and ten. So uh, quite a pitching job in uh, that ball game between Texas and Minnesota. Dave Gold's coming through with a two-hit shutout. Boston leads Cleveland six to four after six. Klein against Barr. Rice. Hit his first home run for Boston with none on in the fourth inning. Kansas City and Chicago, no score after one. Bird against Cott. Later on on the West Coast, Oakland is at California. Jim Hunter trying for his 26th win of the season against Frank Tanana, who is 13-19. Hunter is 25-12. 
St. Louis and Montreal. An important game for the Cardinals, and it's a 1-1 tie after six. Gibson against Torres Smith. It is 23rd home run for St. Louis with none on in the fourth. Chicago and Pittsburgh have completed four and a half at Pittsburgh, and uh, the Pirates are leading three to one. Now we understand that St. Louis has scored in the top half of the seventh, so St. Louis leading Montreal two to one. Right here, there's no scores. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Lead off batter is George Scott. Fly to right field is first time up against Medic. Doc rocks and fires. Fastball is ripped out of third base and right through Greg Nettles out into left field. Roy White up with it, throws it into second base. And we'll wait for the official score to make a ruling. It's a base hit. A base hit for Scott. So now the Brewers have the leadoff man on. And Dell Porter, the catcher, comes up. Left hand hitter. Porter glided out to second baseman Sandy Alomar's first trip. Pitches 
Bates hit on the ground to the right side. Chambliss has it, throws to Bennett, covering in time. And Doc has fixed himself out of his first big jam in this ballgame. For the Brewers, no run, two hits. There were no Yankee errors, and one man is left on. At the end of four, it's the Yankees nothing and the Milwaukee Brewers nothing. No 
in this game. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. Mason at second, White at first. The infield backed off, and the pitch to Maddox high and inside. Two balls and a strike. Sobel having a little trouble right now finding the plate. And Alex Johnson is waiting on deck. Pitch to Maddox. Foul outside of first. Coming over towards the seat, and it's out of play. Two balls and two strikes to count on Maddox. Runners at first and second, one away. Global comes set, kicks and deals, and Maddox takes an inside pitch. Full count now, three and two. And the runners look over to Nick Hauser. To see if they'll be running on three and two with one out. We'll soon know. They go, and the pitch is fouled away again towards the seats up first. Again, the runners go, and he hits it in the air to center field. Moving for Coluccio on straightaway center. He is under it, makes the catch, and the runners retreat as the throw comes in. So Maddox flies to center, two down, and out up to Alex Johnson. Johnson is flat out to right and grounded out to second base. Seven innings, Atlanta now leads Cincinnati six to one. Stretch by Kobo. And the pitch to Johnson. Alex hits a fly ball down the right field line, coming over for it, Lascano. And he makes the catch in fair territory to retire the side. So the Yankees threaten, but do not score. No runs, one hit, there were no errors and two men left. And in the middle of the fifth inning, the score is the Yankees nothing and the Brewers nothing. Steelers running back Franco Harris probably will miss Pittsburgh's upcoming game against the Houston Oilers because of a sprained ankle suffered in the Steelers' 17 0 loss to the Oakland Raiders. However, a team spokesman says starting wide receiver Frank Lewis and Ron Shanklin, who missed the Oakland game because of injuries, should be ready to play in the game at Houston on Sunday. Safety Mike Wagner, who missed more than half the Oakland game because of a bruised foot, also is expected to be back in the lineup. Harris injured his left ankle in the Steelers' first offensive series last Sunday and was sidelined the rest of the game. He was limping noticeably Tuesday when the players resumed practice after a day off. If Harris is unable to play, he'll be replaced in the lineup by a veteran running back, Frenchie Fuqua. Reserve linebacker Ed Bradley, an outstanding performer on the Steelers' specialty team, also will be sidelined for the second straight game because of a torn muscle in his left foot. It was not known when he might be able to return to action. Okay, let's get back to the action now at County Stadium, Milwaukee. Well, I don't know what it's going to get you any details on that ball game uh, won by the Orioles this afternoon or not. Andy Etcherbaron had the game when he hit a blue double, we're told, in the top of the ninth inning. The Tigers had a 3 0 lead at one point. Step in. Left 
left-hand hitter grounded out to Chambliss, unassisted his first time up. No score in this game. Yankees fighting for their very life. The wind-up and the pitch. Foul back. If the Yankees don't win this ball game, they can put out the fire and call in the dogs. Because the hunt will be over. over the rubber and his pitch to Johnson. Fastball is high. One ball, one strike. And the next pitch. Foul away. One thing about tomorrow, if the Yankees win this one tonight, tomorrow the Orioles game should be over by the time the Yankees start. They play at uh, 1.30 New York time in Detroit. Let's see, the Yankee game here would be at 4.30 New York time. We'll be on the air tomorrow at 4.25 regardless. Here's the pitch, high and outside. Two balls and two strikes, one out, nobody on. No score. Let it into the windup, and his next pitch to Johnson. Swung on and fouled back in the upper deck again. tomorrow for the Yankees. We'll be on the air, don't forget now, at 425 New York time. It has been changed from a night game to an afternoon game, a late afternoon game. 425 broadcast time tomorrow. Let it wind and deals, pitches fouled up stairs again in that same spot. For the Yankees, Jim Colborn, who has won 10 and lost 12, expected to pitch for Milwaukee. Medich rips it in, and it's high outside. Throw three and two full counts. He follows another one back upstairs in the upper deck. So the left hand hitting Tim Johnson hanging tough against Doc Medich. Andy 
Hector Barron placed a run scoring double squarely on the left field foul line with one out in the ninth inning to snap a 6-6 tie Tuesday and enable the Baltimore Orioles to clinch at least a tie for the American League East Division title with a 7-6 victory over the Tigers. The victory moved the Orioles a game and a half ahead of the second place Yankees. Baltimore has one game remaining on its regular season schedule. That's Wednesday at Detroit, while the Yankees have games Tuesday night and Wednesday at Milwaukee, and they need to win them both. While Baltimore uh, should lose Wednesday to even gain a tie for the title and force a playoff game Thursday at Chase Stadium. You know, that's an interesting point, too, that uh, shot down the left field foul line. That's why in Major League Baseball fields, the foul lines are made out of either wood or now the newer ballparks are using a kind of a rubberized material for the foul line. The reason, of course, is uh, you play sandlot baseball and places like that where they use chalk. There's a tendency for that chalk to get messed around a bit, and the ball that's hit down there can kick up chalk that would look like it was fair, but it actually could be three or four inches foul. And try explaining that to a manager who sees chalk kicked up as a thing was foul. So that's why they do that now. They they have a crushed brick around there and then they use that white rubber and that uh, makes it a clear shot for the umpire that has to call that kind of a hit. Well, it was last here in Milwaukee tonight that Del Crandall has been rehired to manage the Milwaukee Brewers for the 1975 season. And three of his coaches also rehired, batting instructor Harvey Keene, third base coach Joe Nothic, and first base coach Jim Walton. And coming up from the minor leagues to become pitching coach is Ken McBride. McBride played with the White Sox and the uh, California Angels. Made the American League All-Star team in 1963. He's been in the Milwaukee organization for two years as a minor league instructor. And he also managed the Shreveport Club for the Brewers. Steps in to lead off the sixth inning for the Yankees. The wind up by Coble to pitch. Vanilla takes a low fastball, ball one. Vanilla was called out on strikes in the first inning, reached on an error by Garcia, who dropped his fly ball in the fourth inning. Wind up, the next pitch coming. One out and foul back. On the scoreboard, Montreal has scored two runs in the bottom half of the eighth inning. That was a home run by Jorgensen with a man on. He's the 11th home run of the year. And Montreal leads St. Louis 3-2 at the end of eight. The Pirates did not score. His play was resumed in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Pittsburgh leads Chicago 3-2 at the end of six. The rain has stopped and play has been resumed in Pittsburgh. 1-1 pitch to Pinella. High. Cincinnati 6 to 1 at the end of 7. Coble working quickly. Deals right down the middle 3 and 2. The Dodgers lead Houston 3 to nothing at the end of 3 as we watch the National League pennant races for you. Coble winds. And here's his pitch. Panella hits it to the shortstop. Johnson has, throws out of first base in time. Pinella's out, one down. I believe that the Dodgers win and Cincinnati loses. That wraps it up for the Dodgers, right, Bill? Here is one out. Seven months in the batter. Doubled in the fourth inning. Might have scored a run, but Pinella fell between second and third and had to stop at third base. Chambliss struck out and Nettles popped up and the Yankees missed out on their biggest scoring opportunity in the ballgame. Wind up the pitch to Munson. Strike over the outside part of the plate. Infield backs off deep on Munson. Outfield fanned out. And the next pitch to him. He swings and looks it out into shallow right field and that's going to be in for the base hit. Moscato fields the ball, throws to first base. Munson gets back to the bag, and the Yankees, with one out, have a runner at first. Base hit number six for the Yankees, the second.
second for Munson. And the batter will be Chris Chambliss, who has grounded out to first and struck out. Greg Nettles moves on deck. No score here in the sixth inning. Scott holding Munson on. Kobo kicks and deals the plate. High to Chambliss. Cannot take too big a lead at first base. Kobo has an excellent move over there. In fact, he picked Alomar off in the third inning. Caught Alomar leaning towards second. Pitch to Chambliss. Hit on the ground with the second baseman Garcia. He's up. Goes to Johnson out at second. No throw to first. Seven months and went in hard at second base. So they settle for the fourth out. 4-6 four, on Munson. Chambliss is on. And the batter, Greg Nettles. Nettles has struck out and popped up. Deck circle comes Sandy Alomar. Kobo off the set position, turns it loose, and a swing and a miss by Nettle, strike one. Kevin Kobo has won but six games all year, but three of those were against the Yankees. He has a record of six and 14. He comes into the belt, turns it loose, high and inside. One and one on Nettle. over at first base, then looks down for his side from Daryl Porter. And he throws to first. Chambliss is back. Left hander comes set, and the pitch to Nettles. Swing, and a miss, strike two. One ball and two strikes on Nettles. Kevin Koval has done his best pitching of the year against the Yankees. Chambliss comes back to the bag, and time is called. Now we're ready. And the one-two pitch to Nettles. Outside, two balls, two strikes. No score in this ball game. Pitcher's duel between Kevin Coble and Doc Medich. Right now, a two-two pitch to Nettles. Down the right field line, and it is full foul. That was folded right down the line. Pulled it just too much. Back in the seat for the foul ball. They've completed eight innings in Atlanta. The Braves lead the Reds 7-1.
Kansas City and Chicago are tied 1-1 in the American League after four. Philadelphia and New York, it's a 2-1 score of Philadelphia going into the top of the eighth. Well, it's on this afternoon to uh, Joe Durso covering the Yankees for the New York Times. He told me that he had been informed that the Cleveland Indians were holding a big press conference on Thursday. We presume to announce their new manager. And we also presume it will be Frank Robinson, although that is not definite. Thank you. 
Cleveland 7 to 4. Mason takes low again at two balls, no strike. Barr won it. He's 1 0. Oh. Fine loss at he's 6 and 9. 2 0 oh pitch to Mason. Down low, ball three. Three balls, no strike. They punch Mason the outfield, flame straight away in the infield with Don Money, the third baseman, in close. Down low, ball four. Lost him on four pitches. So with one down here in the seventh, Mason walks, and this is New York Yankee baseball. It's paused the station identification. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. first 
for uh, first place. So we'll see what happens as these races are really going down to the wire. The only race that wasn't necessarily that close was in the American League West as Oakland knocked off Texas. And who believed that Texas would be in contention for anything at the beginning of the season? But boy, the Rangers have been playing some great baseball, but not quite enough as the A's won the West last week. But since then, it's been close everywhere else. In fact, uh, they had taken Los Angeles and Cincinnati in our each day. United Press International puts out a glance, the pennant races at a glance. And I'll give you the contending teams, how many games they have left, and against whom they're going to be playing. But they took Cincinnati and Los Angeles off of there because it looked like the Dodgers would be in. But after Los Angeles lost a couple, they put them back in there. But now it won't be necessary because the Dodgers have clinched as Cincinnati lost its game today. So the Dodgers are in, in the West. And the next delivery. Big curve. Rip the center field. That'll be a base hit. Over quickly is Coluccio. He cuts it off and gets it back in. And Chambliss has to hold it first base with a single. So Chris Chambliss picking up his first base hit in the ball game. As he lines one into center field. Now hit in 22 of his last 26 ball games. He's at first base with no outchers. Greg Nettles the third baseman. Nettles a struck out, popped up, and bounced into a fourth stop. So he's 0 for 3. Stretch to Nettles. All strike, knee high fastball right down the middle. Now tonight's attendance 4,155. The next pitch down low this time, it's one and one. So the Brewers have drawn close to 952,000 fans with one more game left. And a good draw on the road. They've drawn a million forty-four thousand on the road. Last year they drew a million eighty-seven thousand here at County Stadium. Nettles takes outside, it's two balls in the strike. Campbell's at first base. Nobody out here in the top half of the eighth inning. The Yankees have a 2 nothing lead over the Brewers. An important ball game for the guys in gray. Fastball is inside at three balls on the strike. Baltimore's already beaten Detroit 7-6. to six. Baltimore's won about eight in a row. The Yankees have won four in a row. Now the set. And the pitch. Swung on. Bounce to second. Past the second base and off the right field. Campbell's around second base. The throw to third. They've got him there. Lascano, the right fielder, threw a strike to the third baseman, Don Money. And they cut Campbell's down nine to five. Holding at first base is Greg Nettles. throw by the right fielder Nettles. Actually, Garcia, the second baseman, looks like he should have had the ball. The foul bounced over his glove. It bit hard. Went out into right field. The tunnel came in quickly and threw a one-hop strike to Don Money. All Money had to do was slap the ball on a sliding Chris Campbell. So there's one out. Nettles at first base. Here's Sandy. Second baseman. Alomar's two for three in the ball game. Both singles. Set by Murphy, and the pitch. Swung on, it in the air to shallow center. Coming on, Coluccio. He's there, and he's got it. Two down, moving back to first base, Greg Nettle. Well, here's a final. In the National League, down in Atlanta. The Atlanta Braves beat the Cincinnati Reds 7-1, to therefore, and thereby clinching the National League West title for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Plus Capra, winner. He's 16 and 8. Jack Billingham lost, but he's 19 and 11. Finally, again, Atlanta 7. The Cincinnati Reds 1. Here's the pitch now to Mason. Swung on and fouled off. Cincinnati can win 99 ball games this year, and they'll still be in second place. Dodgers just got up to such a great start over there in the National League West. Last year, the Reds caught them. This year, they couldn't. Mason takes high. It's the ball and the strike. Gray 
Craig Nettles at first base to Minot here in the eighth inning. The Yankees have a 2-0 lead over the Brewers. Murphy pitching quickly. The next pitch. Swung on and missed. One and two on Jim Mason. Mason so far in the ball game has fly to left, bounced into a four shot, and he's walked. Yankees have two runs on 11 hits. The Brewers no runs on five. The one-two delivery to Mason. Called strike three, caught him looking. No runs on two hits. The man left on base. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. The Yankees two, the Milwaukee Brewers. Nothing. Frank Robinson, the only man to win the most valuable player award in both the National and American Leagues, will become the first black manager in Major League Baseball history Thursday when he will be named player manager of the Cleveland Indians. Robinson, who will succeed Ken Astor Marty as manager, will also retain both his current role of designated hitter and his salary. And uh, for a lot of people who thought that blacks don't belong in Major League Baseball as manager, they're going to get an additional thing to think about because Robinson's going to become the highest paid manager in the history of baseball, too, because he'll also be carrying his salary as a player of $173,000. The Indians obtained the 39-year-old Robinson on waivers from the California Angels two and a half weeks ago, and the immediate speculation is that he was purchased not only for his hitting ability, but also to replace Astorani as manager. The speculation gained uh, credence last week when Aston Marty was fired as manager of the Cleveland Club. Well, we're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. The Yankees have a 2 nothing lead over the Milwaukee Brewers. We'll be down at the bottom part of the Yankee, uh, of the Oreo batting. All of the Milwaukee batting order get these team streaks and was worrying so much about the ball of the Oreo. And they have won 7-6 to six this afternoon over the Tigers. And they're a game and a half ahead of the Yankees. And all of course, the Yankees cut that half game off as they hold on to the second wheel of the floor. Bottom of the eighth. Shortstop Tim Johnson in against Doc Medich. pitch. All strike. But he's looking in. Rocks back, kicks and deals the next pitch. And it's swung on and popped up. Hudson throws the mask away. He's under and he's got it for out number one. Popped up in foul territory. And there's one down here in the eighth inning. The batter now is Bob Hanson. He's batting for Pedro Garcia. Hanson is a left-handed batter. One out, nobody on here in the eighth inning. The Yankees have a 2 nothing lead over the Brewers. Venice with the first pitch. And it's high ball. Playing Hanson to full. He's a big left handed hitter. It's McClough's hand. And the next delivery. High again. Two balls, no strikes. Joe Nazi will be back at third base coach. And Joe Wolf, he's coaching first base. The next delivery. Call strike. It's two balls and a strike on Hanson. On deck, third baseman Don Money. Manage rocks by kicks and deals. Swung on, hit in the air to deep right field. Nellis after. He's there and he gets by him all the way to the wall. Maddox receives the ball and digging around second and going into third base is Bob Hanson. Manella and Maddox were after that ball in right center field. Manella was there, he thought he heard footsteps off at the last moment. The ball got under the glove, went all the way to the wall, and by the time Fanella picked it up and got it back in, Hanson was on his third base. And he's got a triple. So Hanson now 
at third base with only one out. Yankees will keep their infield back. Here's Don Money, the third baseman. Manage blocks back, kicks and deals. The breaking ball is inside.
Louisiana Tech, whose 15-game winning streak is the longest in college football, strengthened its hold on the number one ranking of the United Press International Board of Coaches Small College Ladies with a 20-7 victory over Arkansas State. Only two of last week's top 15 teams lost Saturday. Abilene Christian was upset by Texas A&I, 46-14, and Lehigh was dunked by Pennsylvania, 28-18. Western Kentucky, Boise State, Delaware, and Tennessee State continue to follow LA, Louisiana Tech in that order. Well, on the scoreboard, Boston defeat Cleveland 7 to 4, Baltimore beat Detroit 7 to 6, Minnesota over Texas 6 to nothing, and the Chicago White Sox 2, the Kansas City Royals 1 after 6. This is New York Yankee Baseball. It's paused for station identification. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. You're listening to the voice of information for the American Forces at 790 and 1420. <laughs> As we go into the top half of the ninth inning, we've got a 2-2 tie here at Milwaukee's County Stadium. About the way these ball clubs, uh, these two ball clubs have played all year long. They played 16 times prior to this. The Yankees won eight, and the Milwaukee Brewers eight. So White's in. He's single twice. He's walked. He's bounced to a fourth out. He's still on the base. He scored a run. Productive night for the switch hitter. He's batting left against Tom Murphy. Makes the punt. Takes the strike. White batting 279, seven home runs, 43 runs batted in. And close to third base, Don Money guarding the line at first base. George Scott in the dirt, skips past the catcher. Porter all the way back to the screen, the ball in the strike. Well, the Yankees have gotten enough hits to be way out in front in this ball game. They have two runs on 11 hits, the Brewers have two runs on seven. And the next pitch. Swung on, loose foul down the left field line. That'll be back in the seat. Got a couple changes for the Brewers. Number two, Jack Lynn's playing shortstop. And number 21, John Bukovic is playing second base. We're down the right field line, and we cannot hear the PA announcement. Fastball, drill, Bukovic scoops it up on the grass. Throws the first base this time. Bukovic, the good fielding uh, infielder, playing second base here. Ralph White of a base hit, and there's one away. Here's Elliot Maddox, the Yankee center fielder. Slide the right twice, slide the center field, and triple hit a run. He's also scored a run. One out, nobody on. Ninth inning, Yankees two, Brewers two. Play Maddox straight away. Murphy rocks back, kicks and deals the first pitch, and it's pulled foul into the Yankee dugout on the third base side. Kevin Corbel started the ball game for the Brewers. He went six and two third innings. Gave up the two runs on nine hits. The left hander struck out three and walked two. Murphy came on in the seventh inning when the Yankees picked up their two runs. He got Munson to foul out. Gave up back to back singles from Chambliss and Nettles in the eighth inning. But Alomar skied out. Actually, Jambliss was cut down as he tried to go to third base on Nettle Foul Foul back. Two strikes to count on Maddox. Then Alomar flied off, Mason struck out. So that threat went by the board in the eighth. Murphy's 0-2 delivery to Maddox in the dirt. Ball and two strikes. On deck, Alex Johnson. Money guarding the line at third base. One, two delivery. Down low, two balls, two strikes on Maddox. Don't forget, tomorrow afternoon's ball game will start at 4.30 New York time. That's been scheduled for a night game. 2-2 two, two pitch. Swung on. Bounced to short. Lind is there. Fires the first base in plenty of time. And they're two out. Maddox bounces out 6-3. to three. That'll bring in Alex Johnson. He 
the Yankee designated hitter. Brewers now have an infield of money, Lynn, the second base, and shot at first. The outfield remains the same. John Briggs in left. Bob Coluccio in center. And six, six to uh, Lescano out in right field. Here's Johnson. He slides to right, bounces to second, slides to right again, drove in a single with a drove in a run with a single to right. And he takes down low ball. Yankees two, Brewers two. Top half the ninth inning, two out, nobody on for the Yankees. Swing and a miss. It's one and one. in this ball game where the Yankees didn't get a base hit and that was back in the second against Coble. Swing and a miss. One and two. Murphy takes a long look at Porter. Now he's ready. A one, two pitch. Up and in. Two balls, two strikes. Two-two delivery. Swung on, chopped right back to Murphy. Fisher grabs it. Ben throws the first base in plenty of time, and Johnson is out number three here in the ninth inning. Three up and three down. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Scores tied. Yankees two to the Milwaukee Brewers two. Updating the baseball scoreboard, Los Angeles and Houston. Los Angeles still leading, but it's uh, now a pretty close ball game. The Astros came back with four runs in the bottom of the sixth, and Los Angeles leads that game 5-4. The Dodgers couldn't care less about this game anymore because Cincinnati earlier was beaten by Atlanta by the score of 7-1, so Cincinnati already has been eliminated from that race in the National League West. Pittsburgh continues to battle Chicago. Chicago uh, took an early 1-0 lead in that game. The Pirates scored three in the bottom of the fourth to take a 3-1 lead. Chicago chipped back with one of the six to make it 3-2. And then Chicago scored three in the top of the seventh to make it a 5-3 game. But now in the eighth, Bob Robertson has hit a 16 home run for the Pirates. It was a two-run blast. So that score uh, right now is at least tied between Chicago and Pittsburgh. And now we can tell you that it's um, the lead goes to Pittsburgh because uh, the Pirates scored one in the bottom of the seventh, so now it's at least a 6-5 to five game in favor of the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. So St. Louis has already lost now 3-2 to two to Montreal, so that could be a big win for the Pirates. Yankees have had a couple of opportunities to score this ball game. They have two runs on 11 hits, no errors. The Brewers, two runs on seven hits, have made one error. Bob Robertson just hit his 16th home run for the Pirates in the eighth inning with a man on. But the Pirates now lead the Chicago Cup 6 to 5. And Pirates batting bottom of the eighth. The Dodgers 5, the Houston Astros 4. That's after 6. Cincinnati 7 to 1, so the Dodgers are the champs over in the National League West. Porter took a long time getting up. Now we're ready. And the first pitch to Darrell Porter. Swung on it deep down the right side, but it'll hook foul into the seat. And there's some action in the Yankee bullpen. It's like Sparky Lyle getting loose. Center field. Nettles playing a wide a third. 
but even with the bag. Here's a 2-1 delivery to Daryl Porter. Swung on it up in the air to center field. Maddox coming on. He's there. Under the, he's got it. And there's one away. Out of the ninth inning, and we've got a 2-2 tie here at Milwaukee. Outside, it's a ball. And the next delivery. Outside and high, two balls, no strike. Briggs has bounced to short. He's bounced into a double play. He's also single to right field, so he's one for three. And the next delivery. High ball, three, it's three and all. On deck is Dave May. One out, nobody on here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Four side, Yankees two and the Milwaukee Brewers two. That is behind uh, three and over to John Briggs. Have to be careful with this pitch. Swung on, check swing down toward shortstop. Mason up, fires the first, and they've got him. A three ball, no strike count. Briggs started a swing and a ball away from him. The ball hit the bat and bounced to the shortstop base who came and gloved the ball, threw off balance and got his man by half a step. So they're two out. An excellent play by shortstop Jim Mason. Here's Dave May, the designated hitter. He flies to right field, bounced to first and struck out. He's over three. Fouled off. That'll be back to the seat. No play. One strike to count. With the 0-1 pitch. That's ball. This one is low. It's the ball of the strike. Yankees really fighting to hang in on this pennant race over here in the East. Baltimore's already beaten the Tigers 7-6. The Yankees need a win. Big curve is high. Two balls and a strike on May. Say one thing. Both the Orioles and the Yankees have not flagging up at all. They've both been playing winning baseball. Baltimore's won about eight in a row. The Yankees have won four in a row. Down low. Three balls and a strike on Dave May. The Orioles have done theirs the hard way. They've held them behind a couple of ball games when it looked helpless. 3-1 delivery. Swung on it on a ground. Face that right field. Manella in quickly. He'll block that ball and get it back in the second base. And Dave May holds his first base with his first base into the ball game, and the eighth base hit for the Brewers. So May at first base, two down here in the ninth inning. That'll bring in Bob Lucio, the center fielder. Lucio is double. Bounce out from the plate. He's also tied to center field. So one to three. Marky Lyle continuing to get loose in the Yankee pen. May gets back. Yankees two, Brewers two here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Two out. And a man at first base. The pitch to Coluccio. Breaking ball is down low. Coluccio came into the ball game batting a 220. The base that he got in the second inning, the double, was just his second base hit against Yankee pitching all year. He's two for 32. The 1 0 delivery. Misses outside. Two balls, no strikes. Maddox now looking at it much. May moving off first base. He's checked. Throw there, and May gets back easily. Now, 
but it sets again. And the 2 old delivery. Check swing and fouled off. And it's two balls and a strike. The ball kicked off the basing of the Brewer dugout, bounced back to the first base coach. Joe Walton, he threw it back out. Jim Walton, actually, the first base coach. Walton's been rehired, so has Joe Nazi, Harvey Keene, and skipper Del Prando for next year. Now, uh, Whitmire will take over some minor league pitching duties. Brewers are bringing in pitching coach Ken McBride, only with the White Sox and the Angels. Now the set. And the 2 1 pitch. Called strike two, a slider on the outside corner, and the two balls, two strikes. Matty's taking a lot of time. He's being very deliberate here. We're in the bottom half tonight, then he. Now Bennett is ready. And a 2-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. That'll be into the Yankee dugout on the left on the third base side. Well, the count remains two balls, two strikes on Bob Coluccio. Dave May at first base with two outs. We're in the bottom half the ninth inning. The score's tied. Yankees two, the Milwaukee Brewers two. is ready. And the pitch. Swung on. It slowly toward shortstop. Mason up. Fires off balance. They get him by half a step. Just tipping Coluccio at first base. Mason makes another sparkler. No runs are hit. No errors. The man left on base. We're going into extra innings at the end of nine. The Yankees two. The Milwaukee Brewers two. Now looking at other scores, this afternoon Baltimore beats the Tigers 7-6. And as of now, they're a game and a half ahead of the Yankees. Boston also beat Cleveland 7-4. Minnesota 6, Texas, I think that's the final. And the ball game going on along with this one. The Chicago White Sox 2, the Kansas City Royals 1 after 7. Looking over the races in the National League, Montreal beat the Cardinals 3-2. Pittsburgh 6. The Chicago Cubs 5. That's after 8. So should the Pirates win that ball game, there'll be a game ahead of the Cardinals over in the National League East. The uh, Los Angeles Dodgers have already clinched as Atlanta beat Cincinnati 7-1. And the Dodgers lead Houston 5-4 after 6. One other final in the uh, National League. The Philadelphia Phillies 2. The New York Mets 1.
Well, Jim Cutt won his 21st ball game of the year as he beat Kansas City. And a check swing ground ball to first, but it kicks foul. And there's a little news here on Jim Cutt. He is now the winningest active left-hander in the majors. And uh, the winningest White Sox pitcher of the year by winning the night. So Cott, who was almost released in the middle of the year, was going real bad. I remember when the Yankees came in there in the middle of the year, and then suddenly he turned his season around. And that's what happens when you keep yourself in good physical condition. The pitch is low and all the way back to the screen. One ball, two strikes. We're in the top of the tenth at Milwaukee County Stadium. Yankees two and the Brewers two. Game started, 39 degree temperature. He checked his swing and it's a little low, it's two and two. Well, the Pirates bounced back with two in the bottom of the eighth to beat the Cubs six to five. Just the over LaRoche, and now the Pirates have a full game lead on the Cardinals in the National League East. Murphy winds and the pitch swing and a missed strike three months and it struck out. And there are two away. And with two out, the batter will be Chris Chambliss. Chambliss has bounced the first, struck out, bounced the second, and single. And then Chris trying to go from first to third. He had singled in the eighth inning and then Nettle single to right. And with Chambliss trying to go to third, he was cut down on a beautiful throw by uh, the right fielder, six till Lescano. Looks like a pretty good young ball player. All right, the pitch to Chambliss is lying. That's going to be in for a base hit. Lukovic, the second baseman, is on the outfield grass. Low, what a beautiful play by Porter to save a wild pitch and an advance by Chambliss. Backhanded in the short hop. It's three balls and a strike. who is not a threat to run. The stretch, he does not go. The 3-1 pitch is foul, but back in the upper deck and out of play. So now Chambliss will be running. Three balls, two strikes, two up. Ray can pull one down the line here. Chambliss could score all the way from first base. But he will be running with the pitch and two out. He said. There goes Chambliss. The ball is fouled again back in the seats and out of play. So Murphy gets a new ball, flipping it up and down, back of the uh, pitching mound. Now rubbing it up. George Scott playing in back of Chambliss at first base. Two out in the top of the tenth. We're all tied 2 2. A must game for the Yankees. Murphy throws to first. Scott sneaking in back of Chambliss, but Chris is back. It was a tricky play by the Brewers that time, but it didn't work. Big right hander sets again. There goes Chambliss. The pitch is bounced to second base. Vukovic up with it. Over to Scott in plenty of time, and the Yankees are retired. No runs ahead, no errors. A man left in the middle of the tent. It's the Yankees two and the Brewers two. Will Chamberlain, co basketball's top scorer of all time, has retired as coach and player for the San Diego Conquistadors. The announcement was made by club owner Dr. Leonard Bloom at a news conference. Chamberlain did not attend the conference, and Bloom declined to reveal where he was. According to Bloom, he said, I would have liked to see Will play this year. I think it would have meant the championship. General manager Alex Kosa will double as coach this season. Chamberlain jumped the Los Angeles Lakers to coach the Cruz Cruz the last year. That's the Conquistadors. But the courts would not allow him to play. Bloom said Chamberlain still will be in association with the team in the development of players. He said the reason for Chamberlain's retiring will be revealed in the next issue of a national magazine, and presumably that would be Sporting News, I should say, uh, well, perhaps Sporting News, if you want to consider that a magazine, or Sports Illustrated. 
Jay Blaine, who was 38, joined the NBA in 1959 with Philadelphia. He played 1,045 games before jumping the Lakers prior to last year. All right, we're going into the 11th inning now. Oh, no, we're not. This is the bottom of the 10th. I was hoping we were going into the 11th to get rid of the bottom of the 10th. But Maddox will have to pitch to Tim Johnson, John Vukovic, and Don Money, unless we have some pinch hitters. Thank you. 
hard sacrifice fly that Roy White had to make a fine play on that drove in the second run to tie up this ball game. Oh, cool. 
cold out here. Just sit around or just stand around for a little while. Your circulation stops. So the Brewers at Lescano at first. Money is second. Lind at third. There's one out in the batter, George Scott. And now the Yankee infield has Chambliss in at first, Nettles in at third, and Mason and Alomar about halfway where they can go free to the double play or the play to the plate. Pitch has got ground ball, Mason, that's the ball game. And there go the Yankee chances after 161 games. The Yankees have been eliminated from the pennant race as George Scott hit the first pitch right through the middle for a base hit. And so the strategy went by the board. All the great playing of the Yankees all year long. And I just can't believe it. I, I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm actually stunned. And with that thought, we'll leave the Silver Zudu and the Yankees Network. This broadcast was authorized under rights granted by Milwaukee, New York, and was intended solely for the entertainment of the AFRTS listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written permission of Milwaukee and New York is prohibited. So Baltimore has clinched the American League East, beating Detroit 7-6. The Yankees beaten by Milwaukee.